Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is part two of the Mighty Vice Float Lock Vice build. Be sure and go back and watch part one, or you may not understand what I'm talking about here, but let's get going. As you recall, in the last part, I had milled these down to the same length, and I have a layout die on one of them, and I'm ready to start the layout of these holes and you will recall I gave you most of the dimensions right there I probably do not even need to lay this out but I'm going to do it for reference because when I get on the milling machine I'm going to do my mill my drilling on the milling machine I will be using the digital readout but it's nice to have this for reference and I don't know if you people have a milling machine you may be doing this on a drill press Normally I do the layout with a height gauge, which I love, and they're super accurate. But let's do something just a little different, and you could do it, of course, with combination squares. But let me use a surface gauge along with the rule holder, the Sterrett rule holder. And this is something that I, I'm not sure I have ever used. It's certainly not on a video. And I've got a 6-inch scale in there, and it's perfectly flush with the surface plate. Now do this on a surface plate. So with everything perfectly clean I am pushing the rule down, locking it, and then I'm going to set the surface gauge. That's a shear to Miko. Looking at it from this angle, notice how I have the scriber set. And this is the adjustment for up and down the fine adjustment. I've already roughed it in and I'll just set it for 5 eighths. You see how I can move that up and down? And this is I would call semi-accurate. It's not as accurate as a height gauge. It depends on your skill and your judgment. And 5 eighths is half the thickness of the stock. So I'm drawing a center line, scribing a center line. Now the original is four and five eighths. I have cut and milled mine so that they're just a little longer so that after I have assembled it I can trim both ends. So you can see I've got about an extra eighth of an inch there so when I lay out the first hole here instead of being five eighths from the end I will make it three quarters from the end and then fifteen sixteenths for the next one. And that's all I'm going to lay out now is just those two holes. And I'll do that with a combination of square. You can do it any way you want. And you can make this any length you want. If you want to go a little longer or shorter that's fine also. This square is set for three quarters. Make sure there's no burrs on your work. That doesn't show up very well because the, <laughs> the point is so fine. And this square is set for 1 and 11 sixteenths. Let's go to the milling machine. I'm a strong believer that you should drill holes in line with the two pieces stacked. Now you can do them separately I suppose with your digital readout. In fact do it any way you want but I need to raise them up a little bit off the bottom of the vise so that when I drill through I do not hit the bottom of the vise. So I'm using some half inch parallels that certainly will vary depending on your vise and your mill and then I'll put the two in here together like that because I'd like to have them flush with the jaws on this end so that if I have to take them out and then put them back in I have a reference so I'll lay a big parallel right across up against the jaws push the work up against it and then tighten the vise. Let me warn you of something even though these two pieces are cut from the same bar of stock they may vary just a little bit in dimension. I doubt it, but they could. But more likely is that the vise is inaccurate and that both pieces are not being held securely. Sometimes you can tap on one and see if it moves. 
because as you're drilling you don't want one to move a little bit on you. And I have seen that happen. It's probably unlikely. What some people do is put a piece of packing in there, for instance a piece of cardstock, before you tighten it down. But these do seem to be pretty firm. So I'm not going to worry about it. Remember there are two wavy parallels underneath here and I use the wavy because they're very skinny and they are pushed up against the jaws of the vise so I will not hit them with the drill. Now let's talk about drill sizes. I'm going to drill this hole all the way through both pieces and that's going to be one half inch ream. So I'll drill it one size under and then ream it half inch. And then the other one is a little more complicated because we're dealing with two pieces so I need to drill it three-eighths see this is the bottom piece three-eighths all the way through with uh, both pieces both pieces three-eighths all the way through then I'm going to change my drill bit and I'm going to drill 27 64 through the top piece only and then tap it one half 13 while I, while I still have it in the vise I hope you can hear me then I'll have to take it out and drill this clearance size which would be oh that's going to be one size over a half inch I think that's 33 64 so you need to think about all those things and write it down because you don't get a second chance you can't put the metal back on now I told you earlier that I did a layout lines there just for reference and you can use those and that would be accurate or semi accurate. I think I'll use the edge finder so I'm going to come up against the end of the work find the edge and zero out the digital readout then I'm going to come up against the side right here and find the edge there and zero it out and then move in to where the first hole will be drilled which will be three quarters from the end and five-eighths from the side. And now looking at the digital readout you can see that I've moved in from the corner 750 thousandths on the X and 625 on the Y. I've switched to a Jacobs half inch chuck. I've got a center drill in there so I will center drill then quarter inch then 31 64 then I am ready to ream one half. So I got all the tools laid out and I'm ready to go. And it may not show up in the video but my center drill coincides with my layout lines. And 31 64 With long tools like this reamer, it sure is handy to have this device to lower the table and then later on raise it just using the DeWalt. Remember, I made that in a video a long time ago. All right, I slowed the machine way down. I'm in back gears for this half inch reamer. And remember, with a bridge port, you got to run it in reverse when you're in back gears. And now I'm moving it 15 16 to the next hole. Now I don't know where they came up with 15 16 but I probably could have changed that to one inch. Next I will drill quarter inch all the way through both pieces. Now I'm drilling 35 64 all the way through both pieces and that's one size larger than 3 8 
Now this is a 2764, and that is the tap drill size for 1 half 13, and I'm drilling through only the top piece. Very, very important. Don't drill through both. And I already set the stop here so that I won't go too deep. This is a 1 half 13 tapered tap. I'm set up with a tap follower and a tap wrench. And remember I'm only threading into the top piece so I've marked the tap with a blue marker. I don't think you can see it but I'm going to go about down to that. And then uh, go in with a plug tap. See how this works. That tap seems dull. I'm going to switch taps. Well, we'll see if this one's any better. Feels a little better. I'm going to try some different tapping fluid. All right, I went as far as I can go. I'm going to take the taper tap out and do the same thing with the plug tap. I won't show that, and I don't believe I need the tap guide for that. Okay, that took over a half hour, what with all the tool changes and looking for tools and everything. Now I'm going to take it out, but be darn sure that you're done with all the operations before you remove it, because you'll never get it back the same. Let's see what it looks like. And remember that I have to drill from the bottom here a little clearance on that piece. And whenever I don't break a drill or tap, I consider it a success. I have yet one more thing to do. Now I took the threaded piece and turned it upside down in the vise. I have to drill this clearance hole from that side, and that is 17 30 seconds. How deep, you say? Well, where's my gauge here? Three-eighths. Well, how did I relocate it? I'm already on the center line, and just by moving it, the table back and forth with the appropriate size drill, I am relocated at least close enough. Remember, this is just a clearance hole. This is not that critical. So now I'll take this drill out, put this one in, Again, this is 17.30 seconds, and I set the depth stop so that I'm going in 3 eighths deep. And out it comes. And I need to run the tap through there just to see if I had tapped far enough before, which I think I probably did, but I might have to go, might cut a little bit. I could feel just a little bit of cutting up, cutting or cleaning up, but there comes the tap. Okay, back at the bench, I've kind of mocked it up here. This is just a piece of threaded rod, and it's temporary. It is not the final piece that I'm going to use, but I did turn it down to 3 8 on the end, like the original. And this is just a rod stuck in there, but you can see that I've got pretty good alignment. Now, I'm sure that I will have to either polish the rod that goes into this hole or the alternate, if I have a reamer that is one thousandth over, I will ream this hole and this hole to give me a little bit of, of a play because right now it's too tight a fit for a piece of standard half inch stock and you don't want to have to fight the whole thing. All right, and I think you can see now what the purpose of this clearance hole is, or you will at least later on. And that concludes this part of the video, part two. In the next part, I think that we'll go to the shaper or the milling machine. I haven't decided yet. 
and uh, make these angles, machine these angles. Thanks for watching. This is Tubal Kane, Mr. Pete 222.